Hallelujah. All right. Well, we have we have uh, had a wonderful month of October where we had our healing month, and so uh, we are back now at um, picking picking back up with a series that we've been on for for a while. Before that, so we're just picking it back up. We're we're returning to complete a series called Righteousness, Peace, and Joy in the Holy Ghost. And so I just want to, uh, I guess, quickly kind of catch us back up again to where we, where we were. So our theme scripture is Romans 4, verse 17. Romans 4, verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And then a number of the other translations, the Amplified reads this way, After all, the kingdom of God is not a matter of getting the food and drink one likes, but instead it is righteousness, that state which makes a person acceptable to God, and heart peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The CEV reads this way, God's kingdom isn't about eating and drinking, it is about pleasing God and about living in peace and about true happiness. All this comes from the Holy Spirit. And then the, the easy to read or the ERV reads this way, In God's kingdom, what we eat and drink is not important. Here is what is important, a right way of life, peace and joy, all from the Holy Spirit. Um, God's Word translation says, God's kingdom does not consist of what a person eats and drinks. Rather, God's kingdom consists of God's approval and peace, as well as the joy that the Holy Spirit gives. The message reads, God's kingdom isn't a matter of what you put in your stomach, for goodness sake. It's what God does with your life as He sets it right, puts it together, and completes it with joy. Hallelujah. The Passion reads this way, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of rules about food and drink, but it is in the realm of the Holy Spirit, filled with righteousness, peace, and joy. So we talked about, we talked about righteousness. We talked about that we have been made the righteousness of God. We, we talked about that we are part of a kingdom, the kingdom of God. And there's a, a, a way a way that the kingdom of God operates, just a way that the kingdom of God functions. And that um, in the kingdom, the kingdom is the domain or the dominion of the king. And we have a king, his name is Jesus. And the kingdom is where the king's words rule, and we have the words of the king. And, and that's the scripture, that's the word of God, our Bible. The king's words rule. And then we have a kingdom is a system of operation. And so this system of operation is what we're, 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 we're kind of getting into in regards to righteousness, peace, and joy. Because too many times we get hung up on the eating and the drinking and, 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 and some rules and regulations. And, and yet we're seeing here in the kingdom of God, the way the kingdom of God operates is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so we've been digging into these, these details in regards to how the kingdom of God operates. And so we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And, and righteousness means right standing. We have a right standing with God. It means right. It, it, it means innocent. It means that we can actually stand in God's presence without a sense of guilt or inferiority as if sin never existed. There's not this guilt or this heaviness. There's not this, this shame that is upon us. There's a freedom. There's a liberty. We can come into His presence freely, boldly, confidently. Hallelujah. Without shame, without guilt. Praise God. Because we have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And then we talked about uh, um, some things that righteousness has provided for us. And we talk, talked about peace. And that the peace, the word peace means, in the Greek, means prosperity. It means one, peace, quietness, rest, set at one again, means harmony. And then the Hebrew word translated peace is the, the word shalom. And it, it, it can be translated safe, well, 
happy, welfare, health, prosperity, peace, favor, perfect peace, prosperity, rest, safety, all is well, wholly, as in wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. And so we talked about, talked about the peace of God, and we talked about a number of areas in that, and then we stepped over into the area, our third area here, the joy. Joy. And we see, we saw in uh, uh, Galatians 5.22 that joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Right? It's a fruit of our recreated human spirit. It's not a feeling. Joy is not a feeling. It's a fruit. It's a spiritual force on the inside of us. And if we give place to joy when we don't feel like it, it will begin to affect how we feel. I remember Smith Wigglesworth, Smith Wigglesworth says, I don't ask Smith how he feels, I tell him how he feels. Amen? We wake up in the morning and we don't go, how do I feel today? Which side of the bed did I get off on? What? You know, no, no, we get up and we tell ourselves how to feel. Right? We tell ourselves how to feel. And we tell ourselves how we feel before we have a coffee, before we have anything. Some people think coffee is their savior. You can enjoy coffee, you want coffee, but, but coffee is not the answer. Jesus is the answer. Which brings me to my next point, because, oh, well, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is is our strength. It's not the third cup of coffee. No, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. So the word joy in the Greek means cheerfulness, calm delight, gladness, greatly, to, to be exceedingly joyful, joyfully, or joyfulness, or joyous. And it comes from this primary verb, which is an action word, to be cheerful, to be glad, to be joyful, and to rejoice. So joy, you know, gladness, you know, joy, joyful, joyfully, joy, joyous, talking about what is joy, but as we, we, we put it in the, the, the verb form, then joy is an action word. Joy is an action word. So in order for us to live and enjoy joy, it requires action. Um, so yeah, Nehemiah 8.10 says, The joy of the Lord is my strength. So in the Hebrew, the word joy means rejoicing. There's actually a few different words, but this word joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength, means rejoicing, gladness, joy, to rejoice and to make glad. Hallelujah. And then we finished off last, we finished off last time. Let's, um, uh, Philippians 4.4. 4. Philippians 4.4. 4. We'll just read the, the couple, couple instructions that we had the last time in regards to joy. Philippians 4.4 4 says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. And then uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.16 says rejoice always. Remember we talked about that real, real long verse. Two words long. Rejoice always. Hallelujah. And so, the word rejoice, uh, even in the, in the Hebrew, uh, says to, to, sh a, a, to shout for joy. To, to shout or to aloud for joy. So it's not a quiet. To the rejoice is not a whispering. It's not a whispering action. It's, it's a shout. It's, it's something that's out loud. It's, it's to cry out or to call out, to be joyful, to be greatly, to greatly rejoice, to make to rejoice, to cause to shout for joy, to cause to sing aloud, to sing for joy, to sing out, and to triumph. 
So we're going to find out about joy, maybe get into it today, but maybe maybe another week. Um, but there is, there is triumph or there's victory in joy. The result of joy, because in the Hebrew word, triumph is part of the Hebrew word joy. So you can never separate. You can never separate these words in the Hebrew when we see the Hebrew word rejoice. And it has, as Billy talks about this, this wagon wheel and all these spokes going out. And one of the spokes is triumph. Triumph. So we can never separate triumph from rejoice. Triumph will always be this, this singing, this shouting, this, this out loud expression of joy, rejoicing. Triumph is always going to be tied to it. So we can get into that another time. But today I want us to turn, I want to talk about the joy of faith. The joy of faith. Let's go to 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1 verse 4. First John 1, verse 4. John says this. He says, And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. He's saying, listen, I'm writing these things to you. I'm writing scripture. I'm writing these things to you, that your joy might be full. In other words, God's Word has been written to us. Why? Because John didn't write just because he had nothing to do. The Bible says that the, the writers of the book were moved on by the Holy Spirit. God inspired them to write. So he's not just writing this because someone said, you know, can you just put something down on paper for me? Uh, no, no, no. He didn't write it because he was just kind of bored and had nothing to do. And thought, I'm just going to start. No, no. He, he wrote. Because God breathed on them. God, by His Spirit, moved on them. God inspired them to write. And so John is saying, by the Spirit of God, that we have written these things to you that your joy might be full. Hallelujah. Joy is a result of believing what's been written. Joy is a result of believing the Word of God. Now, interesting, this word full, these things we write unto you, that your joy might be full, that your joy may be full, that your joy may be full. The word full here means to cram, like cramming a net full. Okay? To be full, just, just crammed full. It also means to, to level up. In other words, if you had a hole or you had a hollow, you had a dip and you, you level it up. You, you fill up the hole to make it level again or smooth. So in, in woodworking, you would put in some epoxy or you would put in some wood filler. You, you would kind of, um, you might sand around to, 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 to level things out, filling things up. You're, you're, you're filling. You're leveling up. You know, there used to be, years ago in Calgary, used to be Pothole Pete. And uh, he'd come around, and, and you'd make the phone call, and he'd come, and what would they do? They, they would fill up, they would level up the hole in the pavement. Fill the pothole. So, all right. Now, now I don't have to go like this when I come down that street. And uh, it's all filled up. Now we can drive normal again without having to mess up our tires and bang around. And, all right. So leveling up. To full, full, to cram as in a net, to level up a hollow spot. It also means to full, means to satisfy. Right? Well, full, full. When we're full, we sit down to have something to eat and we're full, we're satisfied. Hallelujah. We're satisfied. Full. To finish a task. Full. To finish a task. It also means to complete, to fulfill. It also can be translated supply, 
right? When you fill an order, you are supplying what was ordered. Supply. Supply. And so, so the Holy Spirit's saying that these things, His Word has been written that our joy might be full. Hallelujah. And when our joy is full, we're satisfied. When our joy is full. Right? Just crammed full. It's like, woo! Hallelujah. Full. And it may not even mean that anything has changed around us. It's just that something's changed in us. Why? Because we decided to believe the Word. We decided, right, joy is a result of believing the Word. I believe the Word. And, and it just, it made me laugh. It put a smile on my face. I, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a, 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 a jump in my step. And yet nothing has changed out here. But the fact of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, what's out here is going to change. If I maintain this joy and this strength, it provides a supply to change things around here. It, it, will, it will complete, or we will be fulfilled. In other words, that word that we're believing will fulfill itself in our lives. It will finish the task. It will change our situation and circumstances. Joy is a result of believing the Word of God. Let's go to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. Getting towards the end of Romans there. Yeah, Romans chapter 15. Romans 15 verse 13. Romans 15, verse 13, says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's a couple of things I want to just kind of pull out here. Um, first of all, the word fill is in there again. I mean, last, last night when I was just kind of going through my notes, it's like, yeah, this, this word full is in this verse too. Full. It's the, same, it's the same word. Same Greek word. May the God of hope, the God of expectation, do what? Fill us with all joy and peace. Now, that's two of the things that we've been talking about, righteousness, peace, and joy. That may the God of hope, the God of expectation, do what? Fill us with all joy and peace in what? In believing. Joy and peace is a result of believing. Remember Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. See, faith is the believing part. We've been justified by faith. And because we believe that, we have peace. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Now, may the God of hope, the God of expectation, He fill us, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, that we may abound in expectation by the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, what we expect and what we see can increase. We can expect more, and we can see more. But, but it, it happens by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us see more and expect more. That, that we may abound in hope, abound in hope, have an abundance of hope. Growing, increasing in hope or expectation. Remember, Bible hope, Bible hope is not the word wish. You know, some people, when, when, when they get prayed for, um, and you ask, okay, so, so, what did you receive? Did, uh, they, they, it's just, well, I, I hope, I hope something changed. I, I, I hope something changed. Well, well, nothing, nothing has changed because there, there, there's not, there's not this expectation. When they use the word hope, they're, they're talking about wishing. I, 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 well, I'd 
be nice if something changed. Uh, uh, I wish something would change. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, we'll just we'll just kind of see because uh, uh, I don't I don't know. There's no confidence. But when we talk about Bible hope, Bible hope is the word expectation. And expectation causes confidence. What do you expect? Because I'm confident, because I'm assured, because I believe, because I have faith, I expect something. I expect what God said to come to pass. I expect to be healed. I expect this to go. I expect the money to come. I expect increase. I expect favor. Amen? There's an expectation. That's not a wishing. It's a confidence. There's an expectation. So we see here, now may the God of hope fill us. Cram us full, level us up, satisfy us, finish a task, complete and fulfill and supply to us joy and peace in believing. Joy and peace in believing. The joy, the joy is a result of believing the Word of God. Why? So that we might abound in hope and expectation. Hallelujah. 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 Notice it didn't say that we would abound in more knowledge, that we would abound in more information. Um, I just got um, one of Bill Winston's, the, the partner letter, and he talks about, and I haven't read the whole thing, so this is just a little tidbit that I'm just throwing out there. Um, but he said, for us to, for us to, For us to receive more or to live in more or to enjoy more is not a matter of always having more knowledge or more information. It's about having deeper revelation. You know, it's, it's like the iceberg. We can have the, the five scriptures that we're, we're using for, for a situation and circumstance, for our healing or prosperity or, or um, um, uh, wisdom or whatever it might be. And, and based on our light on those scriptures, we see a certain amount. But all, all we need is for the Spirit of God to give us some more light. And all of a sudden, those five scriptures gave us, there's a bigger picture. All of a sudden, we're seeing more. And as we see more, we can expect more. You know, for example, like, the, like that scripture where Jesus said, um, uh, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, we can have just a, a real shallow, shallow idea of that verse. You know, it's just a prayer, and you just you just pray it. I mean, you just you just religiously say it, and and it, it means nothing. But we sit down and think about it for a while, and all of a sudden, and God begins to give light. All of a sudden, it's like you know, God wants His plan to be done. God wants His plan, and then if we think about it some more, and we meditate on it some more, and all of a sudden we get some more light, and we find we're, we're thinking about His will be done on earth in my life as it is in heaven. So again, it's more than just His will being done on earth, you know, or just your will be done on earth. All of a sudden, it's His will He wants done on earth in my life, in, in my family. Your will, your will. And, and, then, and, then, um, and then all of a sudden, when we think about His will, what's His will? Well, well let's think about heaven. Instead of, instead of having just a basic idea of his will. Well, well what's his will? Well, well, well let's, let's just find what's his will in heaven. And scripture then reveals some stuff in, in heaven. The streets are paved in gold. So I asked a couple guys at work, I said, do you think that would mean that God wants our driveways to be paved in gold? One guy said, I don't think so, because I like doing burnouts, and that might mess, mess things up. And I laughed. You know, it's funny, but, but it's something to think about. It's something to think about, because His will being done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven's full of jewelry. I mean, they got, they got, they got doors and gates. 
had a gate made of pearl. Not a whole bunch of pearls, a pearl. Jewelry. Gold. I mean, there's just, there's just no lack. Jesus said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. A large, you know, a, a mansion. Mansions. Mansions. Oh. Your will be done on earth in my life as it is in heaven. So now we begin thinking about, well, what's, what's going on in heaven that's revealed by the word of God? God wants these things for us. And as we begin to think about these things, then it it's begins expanding our expectation. Initially, it just kind of, uh, we get to see more going, ooh, wow. That's, that's, that's a whole lot. That's a, high, that's a higher thought than what I was thinking. That's, that's something more than I, was, than I was going to settle for or something more than I was just even dreaming for. It's really big. That we may abound in hope, abound in expectation by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because in Ephesians, the Amplified Bible reads that God wants to do exceedingly abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or even think. In, Amplified says, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. Infinitely beyond. You know, that, like that's, that's, that's a long ways beyond. Right, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams, our highest, our highest thoughts, our highest dreams, our highest expectations. He wants to go infinitely beyond that. How's that how's that even possible? But it's what he wants to do. In other words, I'm thinking, this, our destiny is here, infinitely beyond. If God says he wants to do infinitely beyond, then that's our destiny. That's what's already written in the books. Amen? If he says, I want to do, I can do, infinitely beyond, then, then for us to go there <coughs> would not be um, against his will. Uh, in, a, in, a, in order for us to go there wouldn't mean that, it doesn't mean that we have passed our destiny. Well, you've just gone way beyond that God said. God doesn't say, you've gone way beyond I, what I ever planned for you. Now, when he said he wants us to go infinitely beyond our highest thoughts, hopes, and dreams, then, then that's, that's our destiny, that's our plan, that's, that's his assignment for us. But the only way we can get there is, is that we have to begin thinking higher, not just on a natural plane, not just trying to work something up. It is how? By the power of the Holy Spirit. So spending time in the Word of God, spending time praying in the Holy Ghost. These are things that we can do to help us begin to see things bigger. To, to cause our hope or our expectation to abound or increase. You know, we can settle, we can settle for life and then get to heaven and, and God will kind of just show us what things could be. In it. And, and I, I don't want to go, oh man, oh man. Could have done that. Could have gone there. Could have seen that. Could have done that. Could have helped them. Could have. I could have. Could have. I could, I could have really. Oh, boy, that would have been so much fun. Wow. But then it's too late. So, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Let's go to John chapter sixteen. John chapter 16. What am I trying to get across here? The, the joy of faith. Joy is a result of believing the Word of God. John chapter 16, verse 24. John 16, 24. John 16, 24. Ah, you know what? We can, we can back up to, um, that's back up to 23. It says, and in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you that whatever you ask the Father in my name, He will give it to you. Until now, you have asked um, nothing in my name. Ask, 
and you will receive that your joy may be full. Ask that you may receive that your joy may be full. Jesus is saying, don't, don't, don't be shy to ask because up to this point you haven't asked anything in my name. But, but there's time coming when, when, when you are not, you're not going to come to me to meet your need, to, to supply and provide for you. You're going to go to the Father in my name. So, so whatever you ask the Father in my name, He will give it to you. So, so, so ask. Ask. Why? So that you might receive. Ask, and you will receive that your joy might be full. That your joy might be supplied. That your joy might be completed. That, 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 that the task of your joy might be finished. That, that he might be able to cram your net full. Peter had his net crammed full a few times. Right? He got the net crammed so full that, 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 that uh, uh, the boat started sinking. And he had to call, call John. John, come on out here and help us out. Because our nets are so full. And, and our net. He threw a one, one old net and it started to break. John's nets didn't break. No, no, John pulled out his good nets. When Peter's net was full, John pulled out, pulled out his good nets. And they filled them up and they got them, uh, got them to shore. Peter's net broke. And uh, then again... They were out. Jesus died, raised from the dead, and uh, been a little while since they'd seen Jesus. And so Peter said, I'm going fishing. I mean, I'm tired of just kind of sitting around and I'm going fishing. And, and over 50% of the disciples said, we're going with you. And so they were all out fishing. And then Jesus came to shore one day and he goes, have you caught anything? I said, no. He said, throw your net on the other side. The other, the other side of what? The, the, the other side of the boat. Oh, on the other side, as if all the fish are, they're hanging out over here. Threw the net over, and it filled up. And John goes, it's the Lord. And so Peter said, well, you guys bring it in. And he jumps, he jumps in, swims to shore. And that's the, 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 the time when Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. And uh, uh, so that, that's, that's that time, John chapter 21, I think. And uh, yeah, John 21. And so, so we see here, he said, ask and you shall receive that your joy might be full, that your joy might be crammed full, that the joy might, might level hollow up. Maybe we're feeling a little hollow inside. Let the joy fill up. Level up that hollow spot. Satisfy, bring satisfaction. Glory to God. Let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter 1. So ask and you shall receive that your joy might be full. Ask and you shall receive. So we can see part of having our joy full or fulfilled or being satisfied is asking and receiving. And asking and receiving is what? It's faith. Faith, asking and receiving. Asking and you will receive. The joy of faith. First Peter chapter 1, verse 8. First Peter 1, well, verse 8, I'm, we'll back up to verse 7. Nah, verse 8 is fine. The end of verse 7 talks about the, the revelation of Jesus Christ, or the, where he's revealed or manifested. So, talking about Jesus, verse 8, whom? So, talking about Jesus, whom? Having not seen, you love Jesus, whom we've not seen, we love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable, New King James says, inexpressible, yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable, joy inexpressible and full of glory. Believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, verse 9, receiving. So we start with the believing 
and then we end with the receiving. But between the believing and the receiving is rejoicing with joy inexpressible. Rejoicing with joy unspeakable and full <clears throat> of the glory of God. Full of the power and the presence of God. Full of the anointing of God. Full of His goodness. Rejoicing. Do you see that? Between the believing and the receiving, there is this rejoicing. Rejoicing with joy unspeakable. Rejoicing with joy unspeakable. Rejoicing. Yet, believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. So the rejoicing... Hmm. See, here's, here's what we see when, when we look at, at Moses and the children of Israel. They had come out of Egypt, and they were standing at the, the, the water, the Red Sea, and, and there was a mountain on one side and a mountain on the other side, the water in front of them, and then all of a sudden they saw the smoke of the, the Egyptian army coming to recapture them. And they began to murmur, and they began to complain. But God in His mercy moved on their behalf and uh, he, 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 he stood before, uh, behind them and so He was this wall of fire between Him and the children of Israel, between the children of Israel and um, the Egyptian army. And He told them to, to, to go. Moses, raise your staff, stretch it out, and, and God split the sea, split the water, dried the ground. They walked across on dry ground. They got to the other side and then God moved over and opened up the way, and the Egyptians all came to their horses and their chariots, and they got into the middle, and then God started popping wheels off of the chariots. Boop, 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 boop. And they're dragging, and they're hitting, and then the, it's just like, uh-oh, we're, we're fighting for the wrong side here. And, and then the sea closed. They all died. The Bible says that Miriam and the children of Israel, you know, with their tambourine, and they began to sing a song. Well, the horse and the rider fell into the sea, and uh, um, they rejoiced. But, see, we're not supposed to just rejoice when we get our answer. We're not supposed to just rejoice after we receive. We see here that God's way of doing things is that we believe, we rejoice before we receive. We rejoice because we believe we receive, then we receive, and then we can continue to rejoice. But we need to rejoice before we receive. Why? Because it helps. Rejoicing is an act of faith. The joy of faith. So, let's go to, to Hebrews chapter 12. Let's back up, back up a few pages. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews 12 and verse 2. Well, verse 1 says, Therefore we also, since we, have, uh, uh, sur we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset or ensnare us, trip us up. And let us run with patience or endurance the race that's set before us. Doing what? Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and was set down um, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The Bible says here that Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. Jesus endured the cross, why? Because of the joy that was set before him. There was there was a joy, there was something there was something 
that he was encouraged about. There was something he was excited about. There was a joy that was set before him. So as he continued to move forward, he's moving forward towards this joy. Our joy, when we rejoice, it's because joy is a result of believing the Word, right? Joy is a result of believing the Word. He believed the Word. And so there were promises about, about the cross. He endured the cross. Why? Because of the joy that was set before him. There was Scripture. There was where God had told him something about the cross, about the resurrection. We were on the other side. Our redemption, our freedom. Family for God. And so for this joy that was set before him, he continued to move forward and he endured the cross. He didn't enjoy the cross. He endured the cross because of the joy that was set before him. You and I might not be enjoying everything we find ourselves in or, or, or some things that are even ahead of us. But, but, but let's not get stuck in the valley of the shadow of death. The Bible says in Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. It doesn't, it doesn't say though we camp in the valley of the shadow of death. No, no, no. Don't, don't uncamp when you're in the valley. Don't unpack. Right? Don't pull out the marshmallows and, and um, start building a house. No, 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 no. Just, just leave everything packed because you're going through. You're going through. We're not going to camp. We're not going to rest. No, no. We're going through. Hallelujah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, don't get comfortable in the valley. Because God's plan is not for us to live in the valley, it's to live on the hilltops. So who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And so what are we supposed to do? We're to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He's our example. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So for you and I, for the joy that's set before us, we endure. We endure whatever it might be, some pain or some, some uh, 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 weakness or some, some lack or some uh, um, not knowing. We endure these things. Why? Because there's a joy set before us. What's the joy? By Jesus' stripes, I was healed. So it doesn't matter how I feel, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I'm moving, I'm moving out of sickness into healing. Right? Into hell. Why? Because I'm not staying here. This is not where I live. No, I live in healing. For the joy that's set before me, I continue to push through the pain or the weakness or the tiredness. I push through. And for the joy that's set before me, Jesus said that he liberally supplies all of our needs and our wants and our income according to his riches and glory. That we're always having all sufficiency in all things and have an abundance for every good work. Hallelujah. He's made us rich and wealthy in everything for all liberality or generosity. He said, give, and it shall be given. And so we may feel like weeping and crying as we bring in our seed, but he said, doubtless, we're going to have sheaves. We're carrying our sheep. So doubtless, harvest, harvest is ahead. So, so we endure. For the joy that's set before us, the word that's set before us, we're excited because we have a promise. We're excited because we have a word. And this word keeps us moving forward. Not to lay down and curl up. Not to, not to, not to just um, give up. But no, it, it helps us keep moving forward. The joy that's set before us. Jesus has been made unto me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. And, and God said that he's the one who will liberally supply. If we ask, lack wisdom, ask of him. Who, who liberally supplies. He gives us wisdom. Wisdom. And so we gain knowledge and we gain some understanding. And, and the wisdom is the ability 
to apply this word to our situation and circumstance. The ability to use this word. And there's some of this stuff we just read. It's like, how does that apply? There's a whole bunch of people that think this book is old news. It, it just, it just, it's, it doesn't apply anymore. The problem is they have no wisdom because they don't know him. But we're looking at this word, looking at this word, and we got a situation where we're praying, we're asking for wisdom, and then all of a sudden he 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 speaks a scripture to us, and we go, "Oh, I see it now." I never saw it that way before, but now I see how this applies. I see it. It, it, it. Wow! See the joy that's set before us. He's our answer. He's our hope. He's our strength. He's our ability. Righteousness, peace, and joy. In the Holy Ghost. And so this joy, the joy that set before him, he endured the cross. The joy that set before us, we can endure. Another word for endurance is patience. Patience. Let's go. We've got, how are we doing here? Let me hold you a couple more scriptures. Colossians 1 verse 11. Colossians 1 verse 11. And then we'll kind of, we'll kind of wrap up. Colossians 1, 11. Colossians 1, 11, New King James reads this way. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Patience and long suffering with joy. So we see that who for the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured the cross. We see here strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. Why? For all patience and long suffering with joy. With joy. See, what 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 causes patience and long suffering to to carry us over to the other side is the joy. Is the joy. Why? Because nobody likes. Nobody likes the cross. Who, for the joy that was set for him, he endured the cross. Nobody likes the cross. Nobody likes the pain. Nobody likes the. Nobody likes the wilderness. Nobody likes the 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 um, uh, the, the valley of the shadow of death. Nobody enjoys that. So so what 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 helps strengthen? Strengthen us in regards to um, patience, endurance. What's one of the other words here? Verse eleven. Um, it goes by patience and long suffering. Long suffering doesn't even sound like a fun word. Short suffering. I mean, that, that's, that's I mean, brief suffering. But it says long suffering. How, how do you have patience and long suffering with joy? Well, you know that's got to be supernatural because that's not a natural thing. That's not something our flesh is actually interested in. But joy is the fruit of the Spirit. Joy will undergird us. There's this strength. What is the strength? Strengthened with might in our inner man. Strengthened. What is that strength? The strength is the joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Let me read the Amplified here. Uh, uh, 11, or 1 verse 11. 1 verse 11. 1 verse 11. We pray that you may... Be invigorated and strengthened with all power according to the might of his glory to exercise every kind of endurance and patience, perseverance and forbearance with joy. Hallelujah. We get to exercise every kind of endurance and patience, perseverance and forbearance with joy. What does that mean? That means we never have to give up. We never have to give up. Because we can exercise forbearance and patience and perseverance. What does that mean? We can outlast the pressure because of joy. Joy gives us strength to come out the other side. You know, when all this, this the, when the, you know, the, the, the statement or the phrase, when the, smoke, when the smoke settles, when the smoke settles, we're still standing. Matter of fact, when the smoke settles, we're already on the other side. The devil creates a whole lot of smoke and a whole lot, and he, he tries to trip us up and get us to hide and get afraid and to just sit down and quit. And know when the smoke settles, he looks around and it's like, where'd they go? We are already on the other side. 
for the joy. Joy, joy, joy is the strength that causes us to overcome. Joy is the strength that takes us to the other side. Amen? Let's go to Romans chapter 3. Or we're in Romans chapter 5. And we'll just uh, finish off with, with this verse here. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And so we see here, uh, verse 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. So we've read that before. Um, Through whom also we have access by faith into his grace, in which we stand and rejoice in hope or expectation of the glory of God. Verse 3. And not only that, we also glory. Now that word glory means joy and rejoice. That word glory. Now not only so that, not only that, but we also glory in tribulation. We glory in tribulation. It doesn't say we rejoice and we, we're joyful for the tribulation. It says that we rejoice when we're in the tribulation. Right? There's no use in praying for tribulation. Lord, I just I haven't had enough tribulation lately. I mean, why can you send me some more? No, he doesn't have any tribulation to give us. But, but he says, and so it's not something we need to pray about. We pray about it and the devil will go, hey, that's my name. I'll come. I'll come. I'll, yeah, I'll slap you around some more. Sure. No, no. We don't have to pray for it. He says, when we find ourselves in it, he says, rejoice. Now rejoice in it, not for it. What does that mean? When we find ourselves in it, we're to rejoice. And what have we been talking about? We've been talking about joy is the result of believing the word. We rejoice in the word because this is what gets us out. This is what gives us strength to not give up. This is what gives us strength to overcome. This gives us strength to endure the cross until resurrection. Amen? Resurrection. Interesting, Jesus still had to die before resurrection came. I've got a friend of mine uh, who, who um, uh, has this phrase, that resurrection is always late. And I think about that and go, I have no clue what you're talking about. And as I began to meditate and think about it, about it some more, it, it dawned on me. Resurrection's always late. What does that mean? It means we've already died. Right? If we don't ever want to die, we'll never experience resurrection. Jesus had to die to experience resurrection. Jesus said this, if we lose our life for him, we'll find our life. But if we don't want to lose our life, then, then we will never find our life. So it's an interesting phrase. Resurrection is always too late. And too late, I mean, that's, that's, that's what our flesh thinks. Our flesh wants to take care of itself. Our flesh wants to always just, just be fine. No, don't, don't, no pressure. Just, just let me, you know, let me... I just want to live. The flesh just wants to do its own thing. Don't say no. Don't tell me no. No, it, it wants to do its own thing. Um, but, but we need to re recognize that resurrection is always late. In other words, we've already died. Already died. So we, we crucify the flesh. We died in Him. Oh, we've been raised up together with Him. Amen? And so, so we see here, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulation. We glory in it. We rejoice when we find ourselves in it. We don't rejoice for it. And we can't even thank God for it. Oh, I want to thank you, God, Father, for this tribulation because He didn't bring it. But in the midst of it, we can rejoice because we have the answer. We have that which will cause us to overcome. We have hope. We have expectation. We can endure the cross because of the joy that's set before us. And because there's a joy set before us, we can dance in 
the tribulation, the test, the trial. And we're going to continue on here next week in, in regards to this. But I want us to see here that, that um, um, we glory or rejoice in the tribulation, not for the tribulation. And it's our rejoicing while we're in it that helps us get out of it. See, the devil brings tribulation to beat us down, to defeat us, and to cause us to quit. All we need to do is read Mark chapter 4. He sends the pressure. Persecution and affliction comes for the word's sake. The devil does not care about us. The issue is not us. The issue is the word in us. We say we believe the word. He begins to apply pressure and distraction. I say I believe the word, and all of a sudden a sniffle. A sniffle? Where does that come from? What's that for? It's a distraction. Because I'm moving this way, and all of a sudden now I have to deal with... And so now I'm, I'm doing this, I'm taking the word of God and attacking this. I'm going to get healed, health, and all strong again. What am I doing? The devil has just distracted Distracted. All this distraction. We're moving this direction. We've got to lay a hold of the Word of God, and we're moving. And then there's a distraction that comes. That person just cut me off, in, 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 and uh, uh, that just the, in the grocery store, and that person grabbed the last one of those. Uh, distractions. 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 If he can get us distracted, he can steal the word in our life. And then year after year after year and decade after decade go by and nothing changes. Because we've just been dealing and playing with his distractions all these times. Let's, let's be aware of the strategies of the devil. And let's continue to keep moving. And if a distraction comes, we just deal with it in the name of Jesus and keep moving forward. But with joy. With joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. We are believing and we are rejoicing and we are receiving. Amen? Hallelujah. Believing, rejoicing, and receiving. Praise God. So, again... Not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance or patience. What, what does that mean? When we're in the midst of tribulation and we're rejoicing and we're praising God for what he said in his word, it produces patience. It produces en endurance. It causes us to stand up. Right? What, is, what does lifting weights do? If we lift weights, it causes endurance or strength. And all of a sudden, that weight is not as heavy as it was a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. It feels real light now. So now all of a sudden, we have to lift something heavier to get to create the same resistance. As we, as we apply pressure against Satan's pressure, it starts developing strength on the inside of us called patience. And patience, what does patience do? Patience produces experience, or, or New King James says character. Patience, experience, what does that mean? That means we experience a victory. We experience a victory. We experience a victory. And as we continue to speak, experience victories, what does that do? It creates, verse 5, or at the end of verse 4, hope. Perseverance, and character, and character, hope. And hope, and now hope, verse 5, and now hope does not disappoint or cause any shame. What is this? Expectation. What kind of an expectation? I expect God to do what he did before. Amen. He brought me through once. He brought me through twice. He brought me through three times. He'll bring me through this time. He'll bring me through. And so we rejoice for the joy that's set before us. We rejoice in the tribulation. And it, it, it causes us to get stronger. It's like that resistance with the way. I'm resisting Satan's attack in the tribulation. I'm resisting. How am I resisting? I'm resisting because I'm rejoicing in what God said. I believe your word. Hallelujah. I rejoice. And it's creating strength. This patience on the inside. This endurance. And then the endurance causes experience or character. This strength of character. 
where we're not easily blown over. We experience victory after victory. And those victories, that experience causes hope or expectation.